All right, this is SSL Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today I wanted to do something just a little bit differently. We're down here in the aquaponics garden, um, but instead of kind of showing you around at the growth of the plants and the system, I'm going to just do a little bit of talking about pH and kind of what I've learned um, about pH uh, during the last few months of, of this system. Um, and so it's whether you're working with aquaponics or hydroponics or whether you're growing a garden outside, uh, pH is important to you in some way. Um, Plants require a certain level of pH, some plants require lower pH levels, some plants like higher pH levels, and it's important to kind of find that sweet spot with depending on what you're growing so that your plants can grow the fastest and produce the best vegetables and things like that. Um, so today I just want to kind of talk about what pH is, how it's measured, um, and how it affects some of the nutrients in, in, the, uh, in the water. So, um, so first of all, what is pH? So pH is a measurement of acidity, essentially, uh, whether uh, a solution is more acidic or whether it's more basic or alkaline. So uh, pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. Um, things that have a pH of closer to 0 are more acidic. So down here you've got your more acidic um, solutions, battery acid, things like that. And then up towards 14 you have things that are more basic, um, lime or something like that. Right here in the center you've got 7. Um, that P, anything with a pH of 7 is neutral, so that's something like distilled water. Uh, um, tap water generally is actually a little bit more basic, more towards pH of 8, but distilled or um, filtered water could be um, closer to, to 7. So, um, so that's kind of what P, the pH scale. Um, now what is pH? What are we measuring when we're talking about measuring pH? Um, this was something that I really didn't know when I started measuring it, I just did it and kind of looked up what the ranges were supposed to be and went with that. But what we're actually measuring here is hydrogen ions in the system. So all the different uh, nutrients and different um, macronutrients and everything else in the system reacts with hydrogen ions and it also reacts with hydroxide ions. Um, things that are, if you have a solution that's more acidic uh, or water that's more acidic, it has more hydrogen ions in the system. So whether you're using a litmus test or whether you're using one of the API master test kit drop tests to measure your pH, what that's doing is using a chemical reaction to measure the amount of hydrogen ions in the system. When you get over here onto the uh, basic side of the system, more alkaline side of the scale, you're actually, you have more hydroxide ions in the system. That's OH negative. So they're always trying to find a balance and so if you have a more basic system and you add some acid to it the hydro the uh, whatever acid you're using it has an excess of hydrogen ions which will bond with some of the hydroxide ions and you end up getting some water produced and some other salts and things like that that will be produced when acids and bases mix but essentially what we're dealing with with pH is measuring the amount of hydrogen ions in the system and hydroxide ions in the system so those are the two things that we're actually measuring now pH works on a scale, like I said, from 0 to 14, but it's logarithmic. So if you had started off with a pH of 7 and you move down to a pH of 6, I apologize the, about the writing here, but so if you move down one point in the, in the scale, you're actually going up 10 times the amount of hydrogen ions in that solution. So, and then it goes by 10, by 10, by 10, it's logarithmic. So every, every point you go down or up the scale, you increase by tenfold. <coughs> so, so that's kind of an overview of what pH is. Now, um, just kind of a fun fact, those little electronic meters that you can get, the, the fancier pH meters, they actually use the property of hydrogen ions. The more hydrogen ions you have in a system, the better um, your, your solution will conduct electricity. And so those electronic pH meters, when they, you stick them in the water, they're actually measuring how well the water conducts electricity and whatever that value is, it can, they can determine the actual pH. Those are pretty accurate. Um, a lot more accurate than the droppers and the color color ones. So, so we kind of have a basic idea of what pH is. Now, when you're talking about hydroponics or aquaponic systems, generally you want to stay in a range of somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5. So this is the sweet spot that you want to stay in for. This was, this is a wide range of plants will grow here. Now, plants tend to like it a little bit less than that. Um, Cucumbers, for instance, tomatoes, um, strawberries, things like that, blueberries, um, they, they really like a lower pH. So those even like less than that. You could probably go down to five. When you're in an aquaponic system, you don't want to do that because most of the fish that you'd have in an aquaponic system aren't going to really like that low of a pH. So this is just kind of a general 
uh, range that a wide range of plant, plants will grow well in, 6.5 to 7.5. So if your system's somewhere in here, that's pretty acceptable. Generally right around seven is kind of the sweet spot that people aim for, um, or even maybe a little bit less than that, just depending on what you're growing. So why is this important? What's going on here? So you have all these nutrients in your system, and there are others too, these are just some of them, but <clears throat> nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and iron. <clears throat> Each one of these nutrients um, dissolves at, um, or uh, interacts with your with your plants at different pHs, so it becomes soluble and available for those plants to absorb into the roots at different at different pH levels. So, for instance, ni nitrogen um, is most efficiently absorbed by your plants between six and eight. Phosphorus between a pH of six point five and seven point five is when it's most available to your plants. It, it's still available below that and above that, just it's not as efficient for your plants. They will grow slower, they'll have deficiencies, they have yelling of leaves, leaves will dry up and die, different things will happen when it's lower or higher than that. They'll still grow, they'll still absorb some of these nutrients, but it's just not as efficient for them. So uh, potassium, anything above six, potassium will, will absorb efficiently into your plants. Um, calcium, anything between seven and 8.5. Same with magnesium. Anything between 7 and 8.5 is a good range for uh, magnesium. Um, and iron, this is the kind of the tricky one because iron actually likes it less than 6.5. There are different iron ions and um, Fe3++ and, and other iron ions that interact differently. But in general, um, iron will be more, more available in your system at a lower pH. And so that's where you kind of have to find that sweet spot. I mean, some of these, you know, if you're at 7, um, or between 6.5 and 7, actually, you kind of have the best of everything. Um, you know, again, right around 7, you've got kind of the most efficient of everything, and then iron would be a little less efficiently absorbed, but still well enough for your plants to grow. So, um, if you like more information on the nutrients and how they interact with the plants, uh, there's a great channel from Bright Agrotech, um, a guy by the name of Dr. Nate Story. He if you haven't already seen those videos, he is a, has a PhD in, in this and um, has a lot more chemistry background than I do and he can actually go to detail on how to manage these nutrients, raise them, lower them, and, um, and, and determine if you're deficient in one or not in a system. But uh, just in general, this is kind of um, basically what pH is and how it affects those nutrients in your system. So. Um, Hopefully this information, you know, uh, was interesting to you. I found it very interesting when I was kind of doing research and figuring things out. Um, <clears throat> if you have anything to add, please throw it in the comment section. I'd love to start a discussion about this stuff. Um, if you have questions, please ask them. I'll do my best to answer them or find the information for you. Um, if you're starting a system, don't be scared by this stuff. It's not really that complicated. I think this is just more interesting to me. Um, the systems are pretty easy to run. You don't have to like micromanage these all the time, especially in a small scale system. So don't be scared away by this stuff, but um, it is pretty interesting how it all works together. Uh, so, but please, if you have questions, uh, like I said, throw them in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing updates on the aquaponics garden and other things that we're doing around the house here. So subscribe and you'll get updates on the videos that are coming out. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe to the channel. So um, click the subscribe button and uh, follow along if you will. Um, thumbs up the video if you found it interesting and I appreciate any feedback you have. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.